Kia internet. Welcome to the third part of block two of the Community Round Robin Quilt Along. Now, if you don't know what that is, and this is all new to you, you'll find links to all of the earlier parts down in the description below, so check those out. And it's my job to put on the second border of this block. And I've got a few very vague ideas, but I really haven't got anything well formed, which means it's time to get out the sketchbook and just play with some ideas. Time to design a border for the block. The first thing I need to do is work out what width the border has to be. The block at the moment is 14 and a half inches wide and I want it to end up as 20 and a half so that it matches the first block. So that means we're going to need a three and a half inch border on each side. Remember you're going to lose half an inch with every seam. So 14 and a half plus three and a half plus three and a half which makes 21 and a half all up. But we're going to subtract two lots of half inches, one for each side. So that leaves us with 20 and a half inches, exactly what we want. When I design a quilt, I like to sketch it out on graph paper first so that I can get an idea of what it's going to look like. Each square on my paper represents one inch, so I'm drawing a three inch border that's 20 inches on each side. I'm ignoring seam allowances here because I want to see what it's going to look like in the finished quilt. I'm not worried about the unfinished size. So far the block is pretty pictorial with the house and the people and hearts around it. So I think I want to do something that's quite geometric with this final border. My other consideration is I've got a lot of scraps left over after doing all that paper piecing in Brenda's border. So I'm going to want something that's going to use up small scraps. So my first thought is... How about lots of little one inch squares, which will be great for using up scraps, but it's also going to need a lot of squares and that's going to take forever to cut out and to sew. It's also maybe just a bit too busy. So my second idea is just put nine patches in the corner and maybe put a nine patch in the center of each side as well, just to break up the border a bit. Okay, I've played around with a few options and I think I have an idea I like. I put nine patches in the corners and in the center of each side, but I'm going to extend them out by one square on the middle of each side just to make the shape a bit more interesting. Let's give that a go. First of all, we need to make some nine patches. Now there's two ways you can do that. The first and most obvious way is just cut lots of little one and a half inch squares and then sew them together into a nine patch. I'm sure I don't need to teach you how to do that. Now that method's pretty simple, but we're going to need eight nine patches for this border. So for each block, you're going to have to cut 72 tiny little squares. That's a lot of cutting. Another approach is to use strip sets. If the scraps you're using are big enough, cut one and a half inch strips roughly the same length and sew three together into a strip set. Then lining up the seam lines with the lines on your ruler to make sure it's square, cut one and a half inch strips from the strip sets. If you make a lot of different strip sets, you can mix and match them to make your nine patches look really scrappy, just as if you'd gone to all the effort of cutting tiny individual squares. Next, we're going to need some more strip sets, which have two strips of the background fabric on the outside and another fabric on the inside. Again, if you make a few different strip sets with a different fabric on the inside, your board is going to end up looking much more scrappy. Alternatively, you can cut one and a half inch squares and make the side pieces that way. To make each side of the border, take a nine patch, then on each side of it, add one of the pieced background strips, then a piece of background fabric, which is four inches by three and a half inches, and then another of the piece strips. You might have noticed this looks different to what the pattern says. That's because after I put this border together, I didn't really like it. So I redesigned it slightly and the redesigned version, which I'm going to show you shortly, is what's in the pattern. But I thought I'd still show you this part because that gives you some options. If you prefer my original design, then you can use that for your blocks. Back to the tutorial. So now we lay out those borders, add a nine patch in each corner as a cornerstone, and there's the finished block. Set. No, I don't really like it. I think those big chunks of unbroken background are kind of boring. I think I want to try breaking them up a bit. So let's try that again. 
So the process is going to be mostly the same. Make your nine patches and those extra background strip sets. And then you'll need some pieces of background fabric that are one and three quarter inches by three and a half inches. Now make sure you double check that measurement. Every other strip you've been cutting up till now is one and a half inches, but these ones need to be one and three quarters to fit the width of the block. So we're going to sew together three of the background strip sets alternating with two of those plain background pieces. What this is effectively doing is putting a spot of colour in the middle of the background chunk to break it up a bit. Each side of the border is going to have two of those background blocks with a nine patch in between. I probably should have picked a less busy background fabric so you could actually see the effect of this properly. This border would definitely benefit from thinking about contrast between your background and your scraps. But I'm determined not to buy any new fabric for this project, so I have to make do with what I've got. And I don't really have any solid fabrics in my stash that are the right colours for this quilt. Another thing you're really going to want to think about with this border is the accuracy of your quarter inch seams. There are a lot of seams in the border, so if you're even a fraction out, that's going to add up over all those seams to being way out by the time you've got your full border. So really take care on your quarter inch seams. So there's my three blocks for this round. As you can see, I had a lot of fun mixing and matching the different options Brenda gave us for her border, and also fussy cutting a few cats to go in the windows of Michelle's houses. You know me, I'm not going to make a quilt that hasn't got a cat on it somewhere. I don't hate my first border as much as I did when I first started, it's kind of growing on me, but I still think I prefer my second version. Having those extra little one inch squares, I think, makes the design a bit more interesting. But which one do you prefer? Remember with this quilt along, you get to make it your own. If you prefer the original border, you can make that, or you can mix and match the two, whatever you like. And next week, Kelly's going to be doing the center of block three, so make sure you head over to her channel and check that out. The link to her channel will again be down in the description, as are all the links to all the previous videos, so if you've missed any of them, you can check them out there. Don't forget to do all those nice internet-y things like liking and subscribing and leave a comment. And I will see you next time. Kakite anō, internet. Bye.